Okay, in this lecture, we're going to talk about class D power amplifiers, uh, particularly their, their CMOS implementations. So a class D PA is a CMOS inverter plus a series resonant filter. So in the class D network, we drive the input with a square leg waveform with a switching frequency of F naught. And we have an LC network and this is tuned with a resonant frequency at F naught, which matches the switching frequency. Okay, so next we're going to look at the basic operation. When the PMOS transistor is closed, current flows from the supply to charge the capacitor. But because of the series resonant nature of this network, only the fundamental current can pass through to the load. The capacitor is charged from zero voltage up to VDD. During the second phase of the operation, the capacitor discharges through the NMOS, which is now closed and the capacitor discharges from VDD down to zero. This repeats every two pi cycles, and we say that the PMOS is closed from zero up to pi, and the NMOS is closed from pi up to two pi. So looking at this from a waveform perspective, the Drain voltage is VDD from zero to pi, and then it becomes zero. And the drain current looks like a half rectifying sine wave from pi to two pi. If we look at what the output voltage looks like, only the fundamental current makes it through the series resonant network, so we should have. A reasonably good sine wave. Okay, so here we'll get a bit more formal with the definition of operation. So from zero to pi, we have that the PMOS is on, the NMOS is off, and we can write out expressions for the drain voltage and drain current as follows. So here we have the drain voltage is equal to VDD minus R switch times ID times sine omega T. We have that the drain current is zero, and we have that the output current is ID times sine omega T. In our next phase of operation, the PMOS is off, the NMOS is on and the drain voltage and current are as follows. So now the drain voltage goes to zero plus uh, R switch times ID sine omega naught T. This is due to any current flowing through the finite switching resistance uh, in the transistors. Uh, our output current is minus ID sine omega naught T and the drain current is ID sine omega naught T. It's important to note that the drain voltage and current waveforms do not overlap ever, and uh, we're going to see that this leads to an efficiency enhancement. And also we should note that the resonant circuit L0 and C0 prevent all but the fundamental current from flowing to the load. Now we can find the fundamental voltage as follows. Similar, we can find the DC current. The DC current has an average value of ID over pi. ID is equal to the fundamental voltage divided by the resistance in the network, which is the sum of the switching resistance uh, in the transistors and the optimum resistance of the load. From this, we can now find the DC power consumed. Putting everything together, we can find the fundamental power delivered to the load, P out, and we'll then find the efficiency.
P out is given as follows. It's equal to I R M S squared times R opt. And we can substitute what we found on the prior analysis. This expression should look fairly familiar. If our switch goes to zero, we have the classic expression for power in a class D amplifier, which would be two over pi squared times VDD squared divided by R opt. All right, our drain efficiency is equal to our alpha power divided by our DC power. And we find that the drain efficiency is equal to the voltage division ratio between the switch resistance and the optimum termination resistance. Of course, if the switch resistance is zero, in other words, the switch is ideal, the drain efficiency is 100%. Now, the LC values in the Class D network are typically determined by the loaded Q of the series resonant network. Nominally, these are given by our classical definition for series resonant networks of X divided by R. Now, typically in a class D amplifier, R opt, L, and C are realized by a matching network that's matching an antenna impedance of, say, 50 ohms to the optimum termination resistance, and it happens to be a bandpass network as all of our matching networks are. Because of this, the network quality factor is typically limited to three to five in a CMOS process, and this is chosen in order to minimize losses in the matching network. The losses arise because the passive components have finite quality factors. So in our design, we would choose our opt, which would set P out, and then we would find the L and C based upon a network quality factor that was reasonable. Okay, so we'll stop there for this part of the lecture, and in the next lecture, we will start to look at some other practical efficiency considerations and try and discover what the real efficiency of a Class D power amplifier will be when we consider those things. So bye for now.